Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is Friday Night Smackdown. <laughs> it is not Christmas Eve. So that is why everyone's in the arena and now I'm suddenly look and now I'm suddenly going to sound forcefully excited for Friday Night Smackdown. Oh my god, we're in California. I can't believe it. San Jose, California, still a warm side of America even in winter times. And on this episode of Friday Night Smackdown, we're going to have very interesting scenes. There has been Brewing problems between the revolution we've been talking about over these last few weeks, and tonight it's settled James Storm to go one on one with Drew Galloway. But the main event is going to be an interesting one. WWE Champion Bobby Fish is in action with a random superstar. We know nothing about it. We don't know if it's a return, if it's a debut, if it's a new signing. We don't know a single thing about that. So that'll be an interesting one for our main event. Unfortunately, Heyman, uh, sorry. Fish will have the entire Heyman entourage out at ringside to help him out in that matchup. But anyway, as Luke Harper comes towards the ring, tonight's episode of Friday Night Smackdown is presented to you by myself, Living Legend, Alex Crisco, and JDL, John Dave Shaw Layfield. And by God, there's a bunch of eyes on the screen. Oh my God, he sees everything. Oh my everything. God, I can see everything. Oh, look at me seeing. Ooh, 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 he ooh. sees everything. By God. So, Luke well, Harper. so Bobby Fish is going up against Question Mark Guy, huh? Yes. Ah, I see. See, I like that question mark guy. I've, I've fought him a couple times in American Border Patrol. Uh, I, I had a couple matches with that guy. He was tough. Former WWE Champion question mark guy is. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. And United States Champion. And yeah, Intercontinental yeah. Champion. Yep. He's done everything. Yeah. Well, he's going to be a great. challenge for Bobby Fischer. Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we'll keep the things even off Luke, with Even the, Luke uh, Harper can't even see who the question mark guy is. He's looking around for him. It's like, I, who's this guy? I don't, I don't know his identity. I can see everything. I don't even know his identity. Well, there you go. Anyway, uh, this matchup is regarding is to do with the final two men involved in that battle royal last week, which of course was Harper and Kruger, with Kruger winning it. So that means that nine days from now, him and Samoa Joe are challenging for the WWE Tag Team Titles. Oh my God! There's fire on this. Oh wait, that's just. This one. Uh, no, I thought there there's was actual nothing to fire worry about. Days. It's just a forest fire we recorded in South Africa. Leo Kruger, you know, it's close to home for him. Was, uh, he, uh, he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a mercenary back in South Africa, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense with the nation of violence thing. I mean, yes. He's a very violent individual. And, you know, you know, with Samoa Joe in your corner, who just likes to beat people up. Samoa Joe is pretty much wrestling's definition of violence. <laughs> yes, that's, um, that's true. That is very true. Anyway, Kruger and Harper to go one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, if Harper could get a win here, Harper could get a win here. He could somehow find his team winding up next in line, you know, before Possibly. the Royal Rumble. Of course, to be fair, happens. I mean, to be fair, that to be fair, the tag team champions need to get their act together to, to worry about the Nation of Violence first, or anybody other team. Exactly. So he was hoping that our matchup tonight is, for the Revolution's sake, not a bloodbath. Hmm? Well, here we go. As this well, match to be gets fair, this one could be. It could be. But, um, very tough individuals who definitely uh, can put a hurting on somebody. So I could definitely see either one of them uh, causing blood to uh, come out, if not uh, both of them bleeding. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen regarding that. But uh, what is on tonight's episode of SmackDown? There is matches. Well, that's usually what happens on SmackDown. I'm trying to remember them. It's difficult. We know three of the matches. We know this yeah. match, then we know the two advertised matches. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that means after... Oh, oh my god, god! Luke Harper with a hurricanrana! Wow. <laughs> Nominate him for the Flippy Shit Championship, ladies and gentlemen. That is phenomenal. It's that bald a... patch on his head. It takes 100 pounds off his weight. That's a big man going and doing flippy stuff. That is... Wow. I cannot believe what I just witnessed. Anyway, I remember them now. Uh, ahead of the Triple Threat matchup next week... Where, of course, one woman will be eliminated, and then two women will have a one-on-one -on -one match at TLC to determine who's next in line for either Becky Lynch or Asuka. Charlotte's going to take on Nia Jax. We may not see Charlotte next week. Well, Nia Jax isn't like most girls, so... <laughs> exactly. But um, then we're going to have a very interesting tag team matchup, and I mean interesting in a very weird way. It's got... Four, you know, it's, it's got some random individuals in it. It's got Cody Rhodes and Dean Malenko on one team. Ooh. Michinoku Driver! Taking on a very 
I don't know if this is a random team, if this is a put together team, but for some reason, Jake the Snake Roberts is going to team with the Intercontinental Champion Bobby Roode. So there we have it. We have number one contender and champion, you know, uh, in the matchup. I can't imagine that, uh, that Roberts and Roode are much of a tag team. If so, it'd be more of like one of those strange bell fellows kind of tag teams because it doesn't seem like they really have a whole lot in common with each other. Mm, they are completely, you know, two sides of the pond type thing. Yeah. So who knows with that team? But um, yeah, they're going at it. And then there's the two advertised matchups that we talked about. But um, here we go. Oh, oh, Roman Reigns. Uh, why is Roman Reigns on my mind? I don't know. <laughs> Roman Reigns I'm, I'm is not in tonight's episode, ladies and gentlemen. I'm having flashbacks to last week. Oh, snake eyes. No, no Roman Reigns. He's a phenomenal competitor, isn't he? No. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. He sees everything. He does see everything. That's what you have to watch out for. If you're Louis Kruger, he can see everything that you're about to do to him. Oh, massive punch. There's Kruger ran at him. Tiger suplex. Oh, he launches him over the ring and over his head. Yes. Beautiful. I assume Raven's somewhere in the arena watching on. Oh, oh, oh snap mid! Oh my God, snap mid driver! I don't remember the name for it. Uh, I don't know if he had a name for it. Is maybe not. Kruger never named it. There you go. <laughs> it's just the no name thing. That's what it is. There you have it. Well, Kruger almost put away Harper, but Harper kicked out. Now he's trying to once again trap a nerve or whatever in his shoulder. Back going, magma. Now, Kruger. Oh, there you go. I was gonna say Kruger's doing something. <laughs> Got actually go swinging with him. I thought he was just gonna walk around and wait for him to get up. Oh, well, he did a bit of that, and now he's on the floor. Drastic scenes. Oh, was a big elbow. Yes. Oh my God! Tackled his shoulder. Nice, nice ref. Real swell job there for the ref who's really getting into the Christmas spirit. He's so excited he just cannot contain himself and decided to run around the ring. Well, I mean, he's the referee. He's got he's to work off some of, uh, some of his weight before he has a big Christmas dinner. That's a fair point. He's telling him to get down. Krug is going to fly again. He's no, telling he's him to get up. <laughs> he's, he's not going to fly. He's going to wait for Harper to get up, and then he's going to wait. Oh, Krug, gonna I got up. <laughs> He certainly flew, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> he flew flat on his face. And there's oh. that thing. <laughs> the, the flop drop. Harper calls that the yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, will he get a win? No, 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 no. <laughs> Harper can't believe it. Harper going to go for it. Is he going to go for it? Is he going to hit there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's close clothesline. He almost touched his willy with his mouth. One. Two. No, 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 no. Just barely he showed the three count there. You know, I keep saying this all the time. But yes. one has to wonder when Luke Harper is finally going to wake up and realize that Raven is kind of dragging him down. Well, you see, oh, he you can't deny a, my beauty <laughs> shot. He did have a decent showing in the Air Canal title tournament. I mean, he, he didn't really advance, but he still looked strong in it. So you would think that eventually he'll realize that he should be a better single star and not deal with, you know, Raven. Problem is, Luke Harper is a bit brain dead. Well, this is true. I mean, his infamous thing is just, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it is. But he, but he can see everything, though, so he can see the way to, to win the WWE title. Oh, maybe not. He may not even see the way to win this matchup. He can see the lights. One, He's staring up at him. two, three, and he sees another loss on his career. Kruger, with that no-name move, wins the match. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does this mean now that Leo Kruger is the I-can-see-everything champion? No. Can't take that. Luke Harper can't lose that ever. All right. There you go. It's there been confirmed go. then. 
Kruger your winner to kick things off on SmackDown. Was he the winner? Yes. All right, well, the gimmick's dead. And um, <laughs> now we move it only, on. It only works when Harper wins or when it has ah. to do with Harper itself. All right, so well, is Harper the winner? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Dash, dash, Charlotte, dash, dash. That's actually a key code. You need to type into something. It, it causes a, a cheat. Yep, it gives you the ability to unlock... Uh, I don't even know. It gives you the, un- the ability to unlock BB, the infamous oh. nurse from back in the Attitude Era days. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, um, I was gonna say a certain thing in the description, but you know what? Okay then. No, no, because you don't have to type in any sort of code to unlock the ability to ah. go see the Pro Jake Wiki, oh, which is now God. more, uh, which is now has at least the win-loss record completely updated. Not wow. Well, Slightly it updated. Champion. It does have the current champions updated, just not the individual changes. That is a slightly updated wiki, and I like it. And it's even got the roster mostly updated. Well, that it is, is a updated mostly in case I'm missing somebody. There, that is a mostly slightly updated roster, and you know what? That with a mostly slightly updated wiki, I can say that that is not like most wikis. And Nia well, Jax, and you know she's what? not like most wikis because she's not like most girls. You want to know how updated that thing is? Nia Jax is on that roster now. Wow. Is she in the male section? Because she's not like most girls. No, she's still in the female section. Sorry, Just Nia Jax. Because she's not like most girls doesn't mean that she's not a girl. She's a woman. She's not like most. You know, you can still be a woman by despite not being like most girls. She is a woman. I will tell you that. She's not like most girls. Of course, I'd, I'd be careful if I were you, to Crisco. If you're showing a lot of fandom of her, an Italian might come out here and show her dominatrix face for you again. Funny. <laughs> That's never gonna get old. <laughs> That's why I'm in. That's why I'm in a trench coat. You don't. Me no I don't like even you. want to know what you have underneath that trench coat, and neither does Becky, who's sitting here at ringside. Who didn't even say hi to, by the way. It's because you're in the way. She's sitting, she's ready to watch this match because she knows that she, that uh, one of these two or you know Sasha over could end up challenging her for the women's title at. at well. Uh, Possibly Charlotte won't be challenging at the Royal Rumble because, you know, she's got to make it through tonight. Of course, to be fair, Becky... I'm not know, like most girls! Of course, to be fair, Becky has to actually make it through her match coming up next week, but that's different. Yes. And for those, you know, who haven't already, tune into Monday Night Raw on Boxing Day. <laughs> you, can, you can watch Becky Lynch take on Asuka for that title one-on-one. And what else can you watch? Uh... Well, I mean, I don't want to keep bragging about the entire show. I mean, you know. Well, you, you kind of need to. Have you not seen your ratings? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it's all about the passionate fans. It's not about just the casual fans on Monday Night Raw. But you can also watch the the miracle underdog story possibly come to life. You can watch Zack Ryder of all people challenge for the U.S. title. Who's the United States champion? AJ Styles. One Great. Of what else is on the card? In the Pro Jake Universe. Anything else? Yeah, there's a big tag match. All right, brilliant. Good, good plug. <laughs> there you True go. I'll be up on Balor Monday. versus Nakamura and Michaels. Go watch it. There you go. You need to go watch it, genuinely. We're hemorrhaging money. We are hemorrhaging money. We are hemorrhaging those, uh, those uh, pesos. They're not like most pesos. They're not like most pesos. In fact, we're still anyway. trying to wonder why we need to get paid in pesos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn Mexican! <laughs> that Mexican isn't here anymore yet. He screwed us over for years with the pesos thing. <laughs> Knew we shouldn't have let him sign the foreign currency agreement. Right, well, let's focus back on this matchup right now. Well, we are focused on the match because we're talking about how these guys get... How these, uh, these women get paid in pesos as well. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, look at the agility there. Well, the athleticism of Nia Jax, despite her tall frame. Be set up over the next couple months, all done in pesos. Sorry about that, loves. Oh, mini attitude adjustment by Charlotte Flair. I mean Charlotte. It is Charlotte. I mean Charlotte Moon. Didn't you know that she's the daughter of Ric Flair? That means nothing. Hey, we should bring Ric Flair back for for an episode. Have him, no, have him team don't. up with Sasha, with uh, Charlotte. No. Have mixed mixed time, you know, doesn't happen. We don't do that. Uh, this sh- shit faces. Well, she, you know, one of she could, he could manage her. We've never seen that before. Ric Flair managing wow. Charlotte. 
Meanwhile, there's a football. There's almost four count. He's chop. Oh, well, you know, Charlotte was trying to chop Nia Jax, and Nia Jax just brought her own chop to the table. Well, because that chop's not like most chops. That is a fair point. She uses her, you know, she uses her palm. She doesn't use her back end. That's not like most chops. Yeah. Oh like god, this, this is not like most spine like busters. Most... Spine busters not like most spine busters. And this is not like most leg drops, brother. Well, yeah, See, she's not like most girls me. because she puts her hands on the tits when she covers them. No, the other hand's on the face. Oh. The other, well, one was on the tits. She's grabbing, she's grabbing boob while while shoving her face down too. That just sounded terrible. <laughs> and you're on about Natalia having dominatrix fashion. <laughs> well, you know, me and Becky before the show. Did absolutely nothing because I've been here since 4 o'clock. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. We went sightseeing around San Jose, California. We went and saw sharks. Wow. Ah. Uh, we went and saw, we went out to the beach. It's, it's still a nice day here. Wow. You know who we didn't see on the beach? Who we didn't? We didn't see Nia Jax on the beach because she's not like most girls, so she doesn't go to the beach. You're going to say she's not like most beaches? <laughs> no. She's not like most girls. She doesn't go to the beach. When she comes to California, she doesn't go to the beach. She goes. She does other stuff. She's she comes like here to just. She just comes here to to wrestle. Yep. That's what Nia Jax likes. Meanwhile, so here's this not like most spinebuster spinebuster. Like Charlotte was on the beach, but she's not like mo she's not like most girls, so she wasn't gonna copy that. Exactly. Look at this. I mean, this has been total domination though by Nia Jax. Focusing on the matchup. Oh. Has it been a nation of domination? I think she's racist. <laughs> How is that racist? Because Nia Jax is not like most Nation of Dominations. <laughs> There's been more than one Nation of Domination? Yes. <laughs> I remember that racist gimmick you had going in uh, America Border Patrol. I don't know what you're talking about. There is no racist gimmick there. Oh, there no I beg to differ. There is American Border Patrol. <laughs> Just the name of it. <laughs> there is no racism in the American Border Patrol because there is nobody but Americans. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that doesn't sound racist at all. Well, I'm not part of them. I'm not part of it anymore. Is anyway, everyone's so I... is, ev oh, is, ev is everyone's theme in American Border Patrol? I'm a real American. No, it's all the oh, variations mm. of American songs. Like so, some people have the uh, some people have the national anthem. Ah, figure four. Da, 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 da. This is this is actually oh, wait, not like figure wait. fours. Let's figure ah, eight. she's bridging. Oh my Nia Jax is eight. punching the air. That's not going to help that, anything. She's got she's got bees like, all around her. Get this air. I'm not like most girls. You get this air away from me. Oh, that's one way out of it. And there's the ass. Yes. She's not like most girls. She punches her way out. Whoa! Roll Whoa! Up. Oh my God! Oh. Roll Figure up. eight roll up. Okay. That was a that was a smart method by Charlotte. They almost got it. It's kind of got it back in the match right now. Never mind. Nia Jax was going for a double axe handle thing there, and Charlotte managed to throw her into the corner, but didn't, uh, didn't was unable to capitalize. No, she just slapped her in the chest now again, and, you know, all the momentum that Charlotte just got has kind of Oh, she downhill. slapped her in the boobs. She's not like most She doesn't care about the chest, you know, she just goes for the boobs. Here we go. Her chest Time buster. Like chest. Time to end it. A third leg drop. Good night. Favorite to take on the winner of Becky Lynch and Oscar is Nia Jax. Because she's not like most girls. But that was just. To be fair, I mean, it depends. It's gonna be that. Uh, um, I, I brought it up on on that other show's pay-per-view thing that happened recently. That that one show I'm not gonna be talking about because it. Grew up. Anyway, <laughs> it's it's that uh, Braun Strowman mentality where she's a she's a big girl, and so maybe in a triple threat match it might take a little bit longer, and she might get worn out a little bit faster. You never know. How dare you call her a big girl? Nia Jax is not like most girls. Yeah, she's not like most girls, so she's a bigger girl. How dare you? She, she told me to say that. This. She told me to say that she's not one of those petite little breakable things. That she's a big girl. That's what she told me to say. I'm a big girl now. She well, we'll see what happens next on, week. She told me to say that on commentary. I didn't want to get, if, I didn't want to get my head know. taken off, so I said, okay, I will say it. Now, going back to women's match, though, if Charlotte and Sasha find a way to take out Nia, that's that's probably the smartest thing they've ever done in their lives. So, 
There you go. That'll be next week. Charlotte, Sasha, and Nia, provided, you know, Charlotte's still alive. Oh, here comes this guy. But here comes the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship, which I can reveal, by the way, that matchup at TLC will be a tables match for the Intercontinental Championship. This guy looks familiar. Didn't he used to go by the name of Stardust? No. Okay. I believe, how dare you say such a thing about former world heavyweight champion Cody Rhodes? Well, you know. It, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're on about. I don't know what you're coming from. No, anyway, yes. You know that I don't know. Cody and uh, Bobby Roode to meet at a tables match just nine days from now with that Intercontinental Challenge up for grabs. Cody looking for his second Intercontinental title. We couldn't, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't make it a ladder match because we didn't want a repeat of, of what happened before with Bobby Roode and ladders. Bobby, yeah, that was the sole reason we wanted it. Because <laughs> Bobby Roode would just go out of the ring and so. immediately start climbing up all the ladders he sees. <laughs> just keep going up and down it over and over again. The problem is that the TLC said as well there might be some ladders hanging on bits of rope and he might, you know, try and ha climb up the rope and start climbing up those ladders as well. <laughs> just gonna climb up the ladder and stand there. Here comes Dean Malenko down. Dean Malenko coming down to the ring. He's all he's all serious. He he has oh, yeah. he has no time for jokes. No, very he's serious. like I'm not happy about this. Look at this. He, he, he doesn't he's, joke. He's not happy that he's not the number one contender. Or he's well, not I mean, happy know. that he is. Yeah, something like that. Well, I mean, he whatever. lost to Cody, so he kind of got himself knocked out of contention for the title. To be fair, that was a hell of a matchup, though. That oh yeah, easily. Yeah, and I'm I'm saying this as the Raw general manager. That was easily one of the matches of the year, honestly. They fought for, they fought and just fought and fought some more. Cool. Cody Rhodes came out as a victor, and then after that, last week he had to take on Samoa Joe. In Samoa Joe. In what was just as impressive as a matchup, and once again, Cody tested the waters and he got the win that was required. And now, of course, he locks, he gets ready to lock horns with Bobby Roode. But here comes the the real wild card of the match. I tell you what, if I was if I was going down to the ring, even if I'm Jake Roberts or Bobby Roode, if I was going down to the ring and realized I had to go against the team of Cody Rhodes and Dean Malenko, I think I would be expecting a loss. Yeah, that's those a two to, those two together seem like they could really go places. Well, there you go. I mean, if, if the Intercontinental Championship thing fails, tag team, maybe. There you go. Jake the Snake, though. Nobody knows what's going on in his mind right now. No. But apparently, that he's asking the people to, to, to they trust him. Well, I mean, to be fair, I, you know, he probably is teaming with Robbie Root today because he has nothing else going on. I mean, you know, yeah. since he since his uh, failed world title attempts uh, against Bobby Fish, whatever, he hasn't really been doing a whole lot since then. Well, that's that's happened to a lot of people when they've come up against Bobby Fish. Let's be honest. Well, that's true. But uh, well, not everybody. I mean, some people have done stuff that tried to do stuff afterwards. Time for SmackDown. Off the first time in a while to get a little bit glorious. It is glorious. The Intercontinental Champion, despite his it. his iffy title reign so far, it is quite glorious nonetheless. I mean, all I have to say is Survivor Series. I think I think that's enough to vouch for Bobby Roode's Intercontinental Challenge performance. I suppose so. The problem is, Bobby Roode heads into this matchup with an incredible target on his back, because he's got Jake Roberts, who he kind of can't trust, in a way. Well, but Jake Roberts is telling you to trust him, so it's fine. Yeah, but, yeah, but his theme also says, do you trust me? So, you know, Well, yeah, he's, he's asking Bobby Roode if he trusts him. Well, that might be his mistake. Jake might just hit him with a DDT. Then you've got Dean Malenko, who, of course, in the finals of the Intercontinental Championship Tournament, lost under very controversial circumstances. Yes. And you've got Cody Rhodes, who in nine days gets ready to go one-on-one -on -one with Bobby Roode. Yes. So, smart idea for Roode. Uh, bell rings, just walk backstage. <laughs> Do your yeah, entrance the other way around and walk backstage. Yeah, yeah but this is Bobby Roode, though. He's glorious. Yes, so that he's is true. He's not going to care. He's just going to go and be glorious in this match. Even if it Bobby means Rude actually, really uh, being in the match itself. Bobby Roode is doing the right around the conversation with the steps. Uh, meanwhile, anyway, Bobby Roode is getting ready to have a glorious Christmas party. He is, actually. Have you been invited to it to Crisco? Yes. Oh, well, then I'm not showing up then. <laughs> they didn't want you to come anyway. I thought it was going to be glorious when he invited me, Remember, but now you, that he finds out he's invited you, you, you forget uh, that. You, you used to be in America, Border Patrol. He's a Canadian. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, but he loves me, though. He's, he's, he has said that I am a know. glorious commentator. 
Clearly not, considering, you know, you weren't invited to the fucking party. No, I was invited to the party. Mm. I was invited to the party, but since you've been invited, I'm not going to show up. That's what I'm saying. Oh, what a shame. Oh, no. Yeah, I already have to deal with you enough as it is, so, doing these shows over. I don't want to deal with you at some person's party, too. I'm probably going to have to tell you there with you. Jake Roberts going thrown on the outside. Cody Rose yeah, close line his uh, bro. He's not eliminated from the Royal Rumble because he went through the ropes and flying bum tackle. Oh, he hit him with his butt. Cody Rhodes actually You're only smoking bums. Cody Rhodes actually eliminated himself from the Rumble right there, though. He jumped on top of him and then he's like, Oh, dear. That's, well, he might not be in the Royal Rumble because he could be Intercontinental Champion. Are you saying the Intercontinental Champion can't be in the Royal Rumble? Possibly. What if they, what if they, want, to what if they want to try to do a value fish and, and win both titles? Well, that's up to them. We'll see. It could be. Only, yeah, the, no. only anyway. the main world title, only the main champions are, aren't eligible for it. Well, and, and now Shawn Michaels, but that's that's a different story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also Tommaso Ciampa. Sadly, however... Wait, is he, is he not eligible for it, or...? Well, no, he lost. Well, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. People always get second he chances. <clears throat> he lost to The Miz. He doesn't deserve a second chance. Uh, that's very true. Anyway, the simulation, simulation behind mine was that he was that the loser was oh. literally not going to be in the rumble. All right, well, look, we've plugged Raw enough. God. No, we're not plugging Raw. We're we're plugging the rumble. The rumble, which comes to you in four or five weeks or whatever. We in 2017, rumble, remember? Because everybody plugs the rumble. Comes to you in 2017. Here we go for the first time. I think there's no way out. It's finally going to be Rude and Malenko going at it. Oh, God. Malenko, I imagine, has been waiting to get his hands on Rude. Some strike shear for the Intercontinental Champion, but Bobby Rude, wow, just stuffs him down. Which the No Way Out match was, I mean, it, was, it still had a little bit of a ladders miss to it. Ladders. Yes. No, that was against Pentagon Jr. That was at No Way Out. Yeah, why would you say Malenko was going up against Bobby Rude? Because I was at Bad Blood. <laughs> You're the one that said since no way the first time since no way out these two are going at it. I tricked you. <laughs> you don't even know. Oh my god, a blockbuster! He's got the stuff. <laughs> uh, believe, and uh, Dean Malenko just being eliminated from the Royal Rumble. I believe Tyson Kidd will be in touch after that if we can even get hold of him. Oh, where is his little cotton socks? Uh, I don't know. He's spending. He's doing Christmas. He's doing something for Christmas. Anyway. Can he celebrate with Natalia? No, just... No, because Natalia's going to be busy showing up at the Christmas party with you. No, she's not. That's not what I heard! No, nope. no, there's a sign outside the door. So oh, Jarvis Suplex! Bobby would have said there'll be a sign, Bobby, said, a sign outside the door. No Dominatrix. <laughs> Dean Malenko loading up the Tiger Bomb! Rolls back right next to Cody and makes the tag into him now. A matchup that will take place... Oh, uh, uh, Bobby Roode, uh, okay, for some reason Malenko wanted to get one more shot in. But, uh, the match, Malenko's, this has gone well. Malenko just wants to get as many shots in his mouth as Bobby Well, I mean, you know, still got the revenge, he still wants to have revenge on him, but here we go, the matchup that will be taking place at, oh, TLC, there's a spine buster by Bobby Roode, he's looking for the glorious bomb already. If he did that spine buster or the glorious bomb through a table, that'd be in the match. Oh, there it is, glorious bomb! Ah, oh, he forgot to go for the cover. There we go, now there's the cover. One, two, ah, no. Cody's out of two, no surprise there. Well, it was a little bit of a surprise, though. Cody hasn't even been in the match that long, and it just barely got out before three. Well, I mean, the, the glorious bomb is an effective maneuver, as Bobby Roode decides that he wants Cody's to... Cody's still, Cody's still out right now. Cover by Jake now. He... Even Roberts thinks he's down enough. Ah, no, it's only a one count. I think Bobby Roode has just had enough of being on the apron. Look at Jake go. Look at Jake go. Look Jake's at Jake kind of, go. Jake's kind of confused. He wasn't sure what... He didn't realize that Cody Rhodes got knocked out that... Oh my god! Cody Rhodes suplexing Jake Roberts into Dean Malenko. <laughs> the scenes that... Oh, it's all kicking off in the corner. Oh! Rude could have tagged himself in if he wanted to, but instead he decided to let Jake Roberts eat that forearm. Here we go now. Torture rack powerbomb, maybe... Cody Rhodes nails it down onto Jake, covering that corner. Well, there's Bobby Roode. <laughs> a little bit of a fall down drop kick. Yeah, he just just fell over. That was how he broke it up. So I'm just gonna go. fall over, but my feet are gonna hit him. 
Hey, you, you, were, you were pretty right. I mean, Malenko and Rhodes have been gelling incredibly well as a tag team. Yeah, like that. I mean, it was a simple, simple double team move, but it still was pretty accurate. Cody Rhodes now decided to choke Jake for the second. Well, yeah, I mean, it's that's also part of that oh, good tag team. Oh, here we go. Malenko flips him over, Texas Cloverleaf now by Dean Malenko. This could end it. Bobby Roode's telling Jake Roberts to get to him. He's now trying he's to get to see him. <laughs> oh, no. Jake taps out. Dean Malenko makes a former world champion submit. Oh my god. I mean, it is Dean Malenko. He is a force to be reckoned with. He didn't get his, his clover leaf on Bobby Roode, though, but it was Malenko who gets the pinfall victory. Well, the submission victory, I should say. So well, is, it more, is it more impressive to get it over uh, Bobby Roode or Jake Roberts? Well, you know, both are former world champions, so either would have been just as impressive as the other. Yeah, but, but there we have it. Bobby Roode, but Bobby Roode's, until just recently in his glorious ascent to the Intercontinental title, Bobby Roode hasn't really had much of a career around here, whereas Roberts has at least had a pretty uh, consistent career in the Project Well, University. you know what? You know what? He's, he's still one. So that's all that matters. Yep. There still you go. Steve Malenko could find his way being in a special opportunity match. You know, Special opportunities? Yeah, everybody's copying wrong. Take place. <laughs> Ah, well, you know, they wouldn't know that considering Raw's pitiful ratings. But uh, um, I, I think people tuned in Armageddon, though. Mm, yeah, well, we'll you know, watch that Armageddon where that special opportunity happened. Where they got yeah, to see Zack Ryder win. Ah, oh, fire! Ah, oh, here comes James Storm. Here we go. It's time for what could be a bloodbath. Time for the descent of the revolution. Hopefully not. They've got to defend their tag team titles just over a week from now. Yeah, exactly. But they're already fighting just a little bit over a week from now before that title match against Samoa Joe and Leo Kruger, then they're in trouble. Because Joe and Kruger are not exactly a team you want to be going up against if you're having issues between the two of you. I, I, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with you there. I mean, it would have been different if it was before Survivor Series when they were going up against Eddie and Ray, because that was, that was just kind of one-sided to begin with. But yes. Kruger and Joe are a very, very dangerous team, and you do not want to be having issues going into a match against them. Yeah, you're not wrong there. So, this could be one of the, well, I mean, what we saw, you know, a few weeks ago could be one of the last times you ever see the revolution in a friendly manner. Yeah. Very true. I mean, we'll have to wait and see what happens here tonight. I mean, for all we know, this could be some trick. They could just be it fighting be. each other just to fight each other and tease us all. We'll see. It'd be kind of weird for the revolution to do that, considering they are fan favorites, but... You know? Yep, you know, maybe they're trying to get in the heads of, of Joe and yeah. Kruger. It would be a good way to play mind games. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it going, going up against a team that's not really known for mind games, but just known for physical violence, you have to try to get any advantage you can possible. Fair point. Well, here comes. See, I'm sure oh, Joe and Kruger are sitting backstage right now watching this and just enjoying this, the fact that these two are about to fight each other. Especially considering... Um, you know, I wouldn't, I, you know, I'm going to hazard a guess that the matchup at TLC between those two teams would not be a normal tag team matchup. No, no, because no. like the case they, with the Revolution, because like the case with the Bullet Club and the Killer Elite Squad, I don't think these, these four guys can just follow the rules of a tag match. Yeah. So. I don't believe they can. We'll you know, see what's going to happen regarding that. Anyway. Galloway and Storm. Whoever thought you'd see this match. Hmm. Especially the revolution still both been, holding the titles. I mean, the Revolution has been around for a long time. I mean, these two have, you know, uh, granted they haven't been consistently around for a long time, but, you know, they were on, they were on uh, ECW for a while, and then yeah. they, they, they ended up moving over to SmackDown and kind of disappeared for a little while and then reemerged recently and, and won the titles. But, I mean, they, they've been together for a long time, so it would be kind of weird to all of a sudden have them falling out. If you go with it from this year, however, you give the you could give the advantage to Storm because while Galloway was off injured, courtesy of, of Cesaro, James Storm got a shot at the WWE Championship. Yes. So anything can happen, and I mean, you know, you could give the advantage to Storm. But even just recently, I mean, both men have had very impressive singles matches taking yeah. place. I mean, James Storm had that one with Samoa Joe not long ago. Yeah. Oh, I can close on of his own there by. Uh, James Storm now. It'll be interesting to see what methods these two guys, because they know each other so well, that's the thing, so they know how each other wrestle. Yeah. 
And that's so why you're. You can see. That's why you're going to see a lot of reversal moves because a lot of people are. They're you know they know each other. They know each other's wrestling styles. They know each other's moves. So they're going. You're going to see a lot of reversals as you see right there. You're going to see a lot of yes. uh, being able to get out of anything that they have planned. There's so a part of me that really wants to see this match go on a long time, but there's a part of me that really doesn't. Because this would be a great match, but when you got the tag team champions going at it, you, you kind of don't want to see it going on. Well, I mean, to be fair, when it comes to my case, however, I actually wouldn't mind seeing this go on a while, because I, I think Joe and Kruger are going to walk away from, with, from TLC with the titles anyway, so to me personally, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't matter, so I'd like to see these two just fight for a long time anyway. Oh, there's another clothesline by Storm. As he looks to lift up Galloway a little bit. Galloway having none of that, though, responding back with a hefty punch into the ribs. Flying forearm does not connect. See, that's what you're seeing right now. There's a big spine buster by Storm. So you just continue with the reversals. That's what you're going to see between these two men. They have, they know each other so well that they just uh, are able to reverse everything that they're going to attempt. Oh, we might see it starting to kick off in a moment. Elbow into the into the knee there by Galloway. Perhaps trying to take the last call away. Yeah, or the closing time. Galloway up on the second rope here. Don't usually see Drew Galloway fly an awful lot. Galloway with his own blockbuster. Well, I mean, if you're if you're going up against somebody who knows you so well that they can reverse everything you normally do, then you're going to have to bust out stuff that you never normally do. Fair point. Some amateur wrestling now from Drew Galloway. Yeah, see, this is what's happening. See? Gall or Storm's not able to reverse out of that stuff too well because it's not something that Storm prepared himself for. Well, he was able to reverse himself out of that. Well, that was a simple pickup. Everybody can reverse out of pickup. Oh, tremendous reversal there to the... Uh, Attempted sidewalk slam, but it's still Storm right now, but he gets reversed again. See? Reversal fest so far. Galloway sees that Storm is day. He's going to have him here for the gut check. Nails it down onto Storm. It's on Galloway feeling. Galloway feeling the momentum. This could be the prelude to something. Well, see, that's kind of that's kind of what you would expect in this thing. Is The, the reason Whoa. these issues have come about is because Galloway's been kind of not caring about the team as much. He's been kind of uh -oh. focusing more on himself in a way, so that you would expect that to happen. Here we go. Drew Galloway. Future shock. Could try and silence Storm here. Could try and silence all the bad words the Storm has had to say about Galloway as of late. And he's done it. Wow. Only well, took one of them. Oh, I don't know. It's shocking there. Oh, I don't know. Maybe mind games at play. Maybe they were taking it out of each other. I don't know. Yeah, their, their mind games are working. Well, I mean, it, Galloway is the one that's been, you know, kind of trying to, you know, had a bit of an ego recently and, and kind of ignoring Storm when he was in trouble in those tag matches and everything, and now he's the one that wins the match. So it's it kind of shows that maybe maybe he is wanting to break out from the team. Who knows? Well, I don't know. That is a... Weird thing going on between them two, and we'll see if it's just a ploy or if there genuinely is problems in the revolution. Probably come TLC. But now it's time for our main event. The Heyman Entourage is out as the WWE Champion heads towards the ring. We Bobby Fish versus Question Mark Guy. Yes, that looks like he wants to make him tap out again, despite the fact he never usually makes people tap out. Well, no, we've already we've already figured this out. Remember, we figured it out. Oh last yes. Week. Pat, it's, yes, it's he delivers that little tap that he calls the fish hook, and they get knocked completely out. Yes, that's what it is. Because he only considers it just a little tap. Because he doesn't really he's, he just acts as if it's nothing, but really it just knocks oh. you out. Oh yeah. Well, here we go with Heyman and Henry at ringside. Whoever this man is, maybe at a bit of unfortunate luck because they are two very problematic things Unless at ringside. It just, just depends on who he's going to be ta Oh, never mind. Well then. Oh, it's good to see him back. He's back. The four-time WWE Champion makes his return to SmackDown. Oh. Kevin Owens to fight Bobby Fish. Kevin Owens put on the shelf by the man that's out there with Bobby Fish here tonight, Mark Henry. He has every reason to try and get a bit of revenge then as he heads towards the ring. Kevin Owens goes it alone though, three on one basically. I know Heyman isn't exactly much of a 
you know, he's, not, he's not physically imposing, but he can easily intervene in a matchup as we've seen in the past. Well, but it's Kevin Owens. I mean, he was he was thrown off, I'm sure, by that match with Mark Henry. Where, but Kevin Owens probably sat at home during this whole time. He's been injured and just and studied and you know, what had even more fire and, and vengeance within him. And I'm sure even if Mark Henry and Paul Heyman try to get involved, Owens will probably just take them out. He's focused on on doing it on uh, succeeding in this matchup for sure. Well, it's going to be quite an objective to defeat Bobby Fish. Yeah, but if I mean we've we've said it before, over it's if there's one of the few on this roster that can beat Bobby Fish at this point, it would be the four-time champion Kevin Owens. Here we go, and Owens unloading with quick strikes into the corner. They already taking it to the WWE champion Owens See, now. He's not happy. Oh. Owens is the not happy for being put on the shelf. Using the ring to his entire advantage. Head back there to uh, Fish, who tries to get a counter here. This is going to still be a difficult matchup no matter what. Henry moved over near, kind of near where they were, just to uh, kind of um, you know put an uh, imposing pre uh, presence oh. there. Oh, well. Oh, rapid we the do. odds. The number one contender for the WWE Championship heading out to the ring, perhaps trying to deny. Anything the Mark Henry attempts. That's Rapadu guy. It's content ID guy. No, you're, you're mistaken. It wasn't his theme. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. Oh! Back in the ring now, giant lariat. Kevin Owens has been taking it to Bobby Fish since the opening bell. Paul well, Heyman sure, standing close to I'm that sure table. To be fair, sat there. I'm sure to be fair that... Uh, Owens only cares about Cena being here just because uh, he can make sure that he has Bobby Fish one on one. But Owen, there's don't don't give him any mistakes. Over Owens and Cena are definitely not on any oh, sort of cohesion yeah. whatsoever. Oh. It's simply just a similar finish. interest right now. That's all they care about. Owens going. Oh, well, Owens kind of ran into him there. The well, I mean, you know, even Cameron Owens running into you can be enough to set you back. Somebody get those those random people out of the way. Oh. Fish is just colliding into the barricades, but Hen oh, it's Owens to go into the steps, and Heyman's just staring down at him. As long as Heyman doesn't yeah. get involved. Yeah, the bell can ring, of course, if Henry or Heyman do get involved in a physical aspect. And Kevin Owens wants to go into the crowd for a second. He's telling. Maybe, you know, Bobby Fish has his people and Kevin Owens has his own. The SmackDown crowd in attendance as he once again decides to run into Paul Heyman. I mean, it, you know, Kevin Owens is a is a big time favorite here on SmackDown, so I would imagine that the crowd is definitely behind him. Ah, Richard Oku driver, best move in the business. Cover by Owens. There's one, and not even a two count. He was testing the waters there though when he got in the ring. You saw that. He got yep. in between Heyman and Henry, and now here comes the distraction by Heyman. Oh, big time German suplex. And Mark Henry is deeply frustrated right now for some reason. Because he's he, he's he's probably wanting to be in the ring against Owens himself. He probably Heyman wants to put Owens whispered, back on the shelf. I think Heyman whispered something to Henry there, and Henry is now dangerously close to Cena. Well, not only that, but Heyman just slipped a steel chair in the ring there. I don't know if you saw that. Distracting there. the ref. Might yeah. be trying to help out Fish here. Who knows what happened regarding that chair? No, the ref turned around. Because you know Owens will use that chair. Oh, yeah. Owens has no beef about using it, a chair himself. Got a little gut buster there. And oh, sent on the follow up. Good lordy. Cena and Henry are just staring at the action right now. And Hall with a chair in hand. Lobs it at Heyman. <laughs> he hit Heyman a little bit too. He said, You get this chair out of my ring. And now Mark Henry's going back just in case something worse happens. Owens breaker. We got there Kevin go. Owens here. You know what he's going what for here. Look for? Depends. He could go for one or the other. Pop up power bomb to the WWE champion. Cover. No, it's Heyman getting involved. Yet again. You knew this was going to happen. I think Cena is. You know, and you said about um, you know Cena maybe trying to help out Owens, but he could also be doing it to get a real close-up analysis of how Bobby Fish works in that ring. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Cena is a respectful guy, so I think if Mark Henry gets involved in this match, then Cena will get involved as well. But otherwise, yes. Cena's just going to stand out there and and not do anything. He's just going to sit there and watch firsthand what Bobby Fish can do. What is this? 
Bobby Fish with four forearms in the back there. And oh! Backstabber there. Hung him out to try on the ropes there. I mean, he could use that. He could do that on a ladder to John Cena in a few days from now. Signature knee strike there. The running knee. This could follow up with a fish hook. No! Oh. Dodged! Owens, Owens knew that was coming and got out of the way. Tremendous, you know, tremendous ring knowledge there by Kevin Owens to get out of the way. Off the ropes. Comes Fish, but he counters that with that jawbreaker. Oh, beautiful. That was almost like a step from Zagiri. Fish is cocky. Owens staggering up to his feet. There we go. Close line. And another close line. Kevin Owens tries for one of his own. Ducks under. Comes off the ropes. And that beautiful tilt the world backbreaker. He's making a statement here with this attack. Bobby Fish with his back turned to Cena. This is you gotta admit as well, fair play from Fish for not letting Cena distract him. No, it's Bobby Fish is not gonna get distracted by something like that. He's too professional to, be, to do that. Here we go now in the corner. Uh-oh, Cena looking happy about this. Perhaps trying to get in the mind of Fish. Oh! Cannibal sent on. That's a big man getting going and squashing you in the corner there like that. There's the cover, is it enough? No, I cannot remember the last time Bobby Fish lost in one-on-one -on -one action. So if Kevin Owens was to beat him here. That hand was coming down for a three count, though. He's getting closer, and you can see Heyman and Henry are looking worried on the outside there. You can see Heyman sh shake his head a little bit. Oh, yeah. Put his guard down for one second. There's the brain buster onto the knee. Stomping him on the face there, and now Heyman looking a little bit happier. Perhaps... Trying to put on something because he knows, in a way, on points, this has not been Fisher's matchup, but that could change in an instant. Here we go. Fishhook! Did he just tap out, as it would say? One, two, no, he did not. Wow, how many people have kick out of the fishhook nowadays, though? Oh, God, not many. Yeah, that was impressive there. You could tell Owens is definitely, he wants revenge for what happened. Owens, big punch in the ribs there. He has got to be feeling some sort of momentum here. Main event of SmackDown. Incredible opportunity as we see the eight-second ride from Fish. What a move that was there to a big big guy like Kevin Owens. So Bobby Fish, he possesses power that we just don't see. Something, you know, we just don't expect from him. Nice back suplex by Owens. Henry and Heyman still looking agitated on the outside. Could see an interruption in a few moments. You never know. Another Owens breaker incoming. Oh yeah, Down. with that Owens breaker, you know what he's going to be going for here. So you almost have here to. You're you better get going Kick on that. Kick to the gut. Distraction. Hooks the arms in. Package pile driver. That's got to be it. If Owens or if uh, Heyman or Henry don't don't cause a distraction, that's got to be it. The WWE champion could suffer a pinfall loss for the first time in possibly months. One. Two, three, Kevin Owens go. defeats the WWE Champion. Oh my god. Talk and you saw Henry get right up on there. the, uh, you saw Henry get up on the ropes there. Cena has sent him scurrying away. Heyman left a stand and just taking the moment as Kevin Owens, in an impactful return, knocks off the WWE Champion. That's why you can never, ever sit there and, and go or uh, doubt the ability of Kevin Owens because he can just come back at any point. Even you know, people started putting him down after he got taken out of the shelf by Mark Henry, but Kevin Owens will come back with even more fire and rage. And now, if you're Bobby Fish, you definitely gotta be looking over your shoulder. Yeah, I mean, you know, the match of the TLC is signed. We can't make it a triple threat, but there is a potentiality at the Royal Rumble. Kevin Owens could be next in line for sure for that WWE Championship. Well, oh my God, what, a match we go. be. what a dramatic night SmackDown's been. That is going to win this episode of the Universe. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, guys. And Tara.